Welcome to the next Alphabet of Fairy episode and the letter P is this time's focus. In this snippet of folklore, we this time look at the Pilvis, the Pobblevan and the Pooka. Pilwis, or Bilvis, is a German fairy that is a complete and utter nuisance, mostly active on Walpurgisnacht, causing mayhem in the beautiful fields full of crops. In medieval Germany, it was told that he had a sickle on his big toe, that he lived in trees, and people would leave offerings for him so that he did not harm their children. Another thing these creatures love to do is cause elf locks and tangles in people's hair or beards. They are known to live in the mountain areas of Germany where he loves to shoot elf bolts at unwary travellers through his territory. To look at, he has darker skin, loves to wear linen clothes and three-cornered tricorn hats. His sickle is strapped to his toe in order to cause the destruction in the fields. There are a few ways a farmer can prevent this destruction. If he can catch the pilvis in the act of destroying his crops on midsummer day, the creature will die for a year and leave the farm in peace. However, this does not come without its own danger. Should the pilvis see the farmer first, the farmer will die on the spot instead. Another way is to gather some of the corn cut by the pilvis and throw it into a newly dug grave. However, the farmer must take the utmost care not to drop a single drop of sweat and let it fall into the grave with the corn. If it does, as the grain rots away, so will the farmer. An easier option for the farmer would be to take some of the ruined stubble from the field, tie it in a bundle and hang it in the smoke over the fire. As the smoke infuses the bundle, it is the fairy pilvis that will waste away. Pobble van, or in English small people, are tiny gentle fairies from Celtic Cornwall in the southwest of England. These sweet fairy creatures spend their time feasting and dancing. The females are pretty and pale, dressed smartly in full gowns and wearing pointed hats. The whole outfits are decorated with beautiful lace and jewels. The males are more swarthy and dark, dressed ready for the hunt or in blue coats and green trousers. Their tricorn hats are embellished with silver bells and lace. Both males and females have large eyes that are brown and they never ever look old. If you want to see these beautiful small fairies, you must search for a four-leafed clover and place it on your head. This will give you the sight to see them. Puck are from the Isle of Guernsey in the Channel Islands that lie between France and Britain. They are a solitary fairy creature, somewhat like the Puck or Booker. During the witch trials on the island, they became a part of the folklore of the devil. Many of the accused poor women, confessing to seeing the Puck as a little man, pushing a wheelbarrow full of turnips. They are stunted and small, ugly with shaggy hair and have unnaturally long arms that are very powerful and their clothes are tattered rags. They are known to be wicked fellows or even downright evil at times. However, there have been cases of the pook being benevolent also. In this they behave more like house elves. 
if a maid should leave her knitting half done and a bowl of milk nearby, she will wake the morning and find the knitting finished and the bowl of milk empty. The very worst thing one can do to the pook is leave an offering of clothes. At this they will be off in a huff, offended in the extreme. The pook detest lazy people. They will punch them or kick them in punishment, but they will always reward a good turn. These tricksy fairies are also in charge of the power of glamour. A cave may appear to be a golden palace. Leaves may appear to be a handful of golden coins. There are many tales of midwives being taken to attend the births of their fairy babies. In all of these, the midwife accidentally touches some fairy ointment to her eye and at that second she finds that she can see the reality of everything around her. The glamour has gone. The pooks notice her shock and they punish her by putting out the eye that the ointment had touched. Thank you for listening to the latest episode of the Alphabet of Fairies. Little snippets of fairy lore. I hope you will join me on the next episode also. Until next time, dear friends, keep well. Brightest of blessings and remember, just don't play with the fairy folk or you may end up in one of my folk tales yourself. <laughs>